If you're just now getting involved with Photo Finish Live and looking to buy your first horse, or maybe you've been around the game for a while, but you want to do a better job of finding a horse that exists in the marketplace, given all the horses that show up in the marketplace every day, well, welcome to a video I call Chasing Cassis. It's my sort of educational journey through uh, a horse buying process that I went through recently to buy this particular horse. And I wanted to use that as a way to show newcomers to the game how to go about thinking about horses and how to go about winning the, the number of horses that exist in a marketplace to find the one that is going to allow you to exploit its abilities best based upon the research you do on that horse. So let's start with uh, the horse itself. This is Cassis Chameleon. Uh, I paid 22,500 derby for this horse. There was a fee of 1,125 derby, which is the 5% cost that is universal in the game when you're buying a horse. Uh, my total investment there is 23,625 derby for this horse, which puts me at just over $295. Uh, Cassis uh, Chameleon is an A-grade horse, I'm sure, or A minus, I should say, and I'm sure you know uh, that you know the horse range goes from the grade range goes from D minus to triple S plus. So A minus is at the higher end of of the racing scale. I tend to focus on the A-grade horses and the S minus when I can afford them. Um, I find that they are the competitive horses. Those are the ones I want to be a part of. That said, you can find competitive horses in the B plus range as well. I've seen a, some B plus horses actually beat S minus horses, uh, several S minus horses in races. So just because a horse is a B grade does not mean that it is a bad horse. There's just bad owners. Uh, Cassis is a three year old colt. I tend to focus on two and three year olds because that is where you're going to get the, the greatest opportunity for the most bang for your buck because you've got a number of years, a number of seasons uh, to continue racing this horse. And obviously four weeks equals one year of season in the game. So if you buy a two or three year old, you're gonna have you know five or six months worth of racing you can do with this horse before it is uh, retired. Um, I would tell newcomers to probably stay away from seven year old horses. You're gonna find some real bargains there but the seven-year-olds um, have you know, a very limited shelf life, a limited racing life still left in them. Um, so it's gonna be a little harder to get a, a return on your investment that exceeds your investment cost, unless you really do know what you're doing here. In that case, it's fun to play around with some of the seven-year-olds because you can get them at such cheap, such cheap prices. But that said, I would tell you to stick with uh, two and three-year-olds for the best bang for your buck. Um, here, we're looking at this horse's preferences. What does this horse like? Cassis theoretically likes uh, tracks that turn to the right. Uh, he has a two-star rating there out of three stars. Uh, he likes dirt, one and a half stars out of three. And in theory, he likes a firm track with two stars out of three. And I keep saying in theory because these are suggestions, for lack of a better word. Uh, they are not set in stone. If a horse, uh, you know, if this tells you a horse likes firm, that doesn't necessarily mean he likes firm. If it tells you he likes dirt, it doesn't necessarily mean he likes dirt or he's going to thrive on dirt. You're only going to know that from looking at the statistics and seeing what really defines this horse's abilities, this horse's likes, this horse's strengths. So while it's fine to know what these preferences are, the preferences are clearly not set in stone. Now I'm also looking at um, career statistics. So here Cassis has run uh, 32 races and he has been on the podium only 10 times. So about a third of his races, or actually less than a third of his races, he's actually been on the podium. I like that because it tells me that there is a chance that the existing owner has probably been running the horse in the wrong races. And if I can find what those right races are and I can exploit that, maybe I can do a better job of managing this horse and generating a better income stream out of him than these statistics would otherwise suggest. By the same token, I like the fact that this horse clearly has some career earnings, almost 20,000 in, uh, in Derby that this horse has earned. And he's earned, uh, his largest win has been a $6,500 purse, or 6,500 Derby purse, I should say. That's not a small purse in this game. So clearly he can win at a bigger level and clearly he can win overall because he's got a decent amount of earnings 
um, that he's racked up so far. So both of these combined, the, the career earnings in a largest purse, as well as the number of, of podium appearances relative to the number of starts, tells me that there might be an opportunity in this horse that I can exploit for profit if I know how to race this horse in terms of the types of races he should be running in. And the way I find that is I immediately download the, the CSV. This is the Excel file. This is the absolute first steps you should take when you are looking at a horse. I don't care anything else about you know this particular screen where it says races and charts and fleet figures and all that stuff. I just don't care about that to begin with. I want to go immediately to the Excel spreadsheet and start tearing it apart to understand if there is an opportunity in a horse like Cassis Chameleon. Now, the first time this thing pops up, this is the initial view you're gonna see. And honestly, it is just a big ass jumble. I mean, most people are gonna look at this and they're gonna say, okay, he likes to run right. Uh, he runs, you know, anywhere from six furlongs to 12, okay. You know, his his conditions are all over the place from fast to yielding to sloppy to, to, to slow. Um, so people are, are either gonna look at this and sort of um, eyeball what they think this horse should be running, or they're just going to overlook it in general and close this down because the numbers, you know, in this big jumble, I guess, don't really show much of a trend. It's only when you begin taking it apart that you can begin to see, is this a horse I can use to exploit for profit in this game? And it starts by sorting the numbers according to finish position. And I do this all the time first, and I immediately highlight uh, the wins, the places, and the shows in red, and I'll show you why in just a moment. But I want to start here because this is, you know, this sort of unlocks everything going forward in terms of the analysis that I'm going to do. I'm going to go to distance after that because I want to see where this horse uh, thrives at what distance. And you can see immediately why I have highlighted everything in red, because those are where the, the income has come from for this horse. Um, so I can see immediately where his strengths and weaknesses are. Like I can see this horse can run at five furlongs. He's, he's placed uh, in, in a five furlong race three times out of seven. That's not horrible. Um, so I would, I would think maybe he is a short, uh, short distance horse potentially. At seven, he's won once. He's won a couple of them at nine. But down here is what really captures my attention. This is clearly a long distance horse. He's done pretty well um, in 11 and 12 furlongs. You know, he's won more than half his races there. So my immediate analysis is that this horse is a distance runner. Now, he might be okay at short races in the right condition, but clearly he wants to run long and he does not want to run middle distance races. Um, it's, you know, six through nine, you know, six through eight, definitely he's not going to run. Nine may be in the right condition, but clearly long distance is where this horse wants to be a runner. <clears throat> then I'm going to sort by the track conditions uh, so I know exactly where this horse likes to run, what type of tracks he likes to run on. And we can see immediately that he is not a fast track horse. He does not like the fast tracks. And this goes back to what I said at the beginning about those preference stars. You know, you might remember that, you know, uh, Cassis has two stars out of three on firm tracks. And firm would suggest he likes a fast track. But the data says he does not like a fast track. The preferences might lead you in one direction, but the data undermine the preference and tell you what the real story is, which is why going through the data is so important. You can't just say, okay, I have a horse that runs on firm conditions, so I'm going to look for fast races. You're going to not do well with that horse because the horse doesn't like those conditions, even though his preferences might say he does. Here's how you're going to, you know, sort of um, find those conditions that are best for your horse. You know, when you're looking through the races, you're going to see the percentage chance of rain. And that's going to tell you what the track theoretically could be like. Uh, here you're seeing there's a couple of them going off at 40%. The Island Paradise Cup is at 0% chance of rain. And when you're, when you're considering this, you have to look at the fact that 0% theoretically means a firm track. 
A hundred percent chance of rain theoretically means a sloppy track, and 20 to 80 theoretically means you're going to get a good yielding or soft track. And I keep saying theoretically because this is one of the sort of black swans of the game, if you want to call it that. Just because you have these percentages does not mean you're going to get what you think you're going to get. I ran a race last night that theoretically had a 100% chance of rain, which would give you a sloppy or at least a soft track, but it actually turned out to be a yielding track. The horse I ran loves a sloppy track. So I was really going for the idea that, you know, if I put him in a 100% chance of rain, he's, he's theoretically going to get or more likely to get the kind of track that he excels at. Unfortunately, even 100% gave us a yielding track and he did bad at it. He finished like sixth or seventh out of eight horses because he's not a horse that runs in a, on a yielding track. It's just not his game. He's a soft and sloppy horse and you know he didn't get that and he didn't do well. So you have to pay attention to these track conditions and understand where your horse really likes to run and understand what the rain percentage actually means in terms of what you're probably going to get, but understanding that there's a, there's a chance that you're not going to get that and you're going to get something that sort of throws a monkey wrench into your planning. Now, he's pretty good on a good track. Uh, he's fairly decent, I should say, on a good track. He's, he's placed there a couple of times. Um, he likes sloppy. Uh, he's not so great at soft, but he's definitely good at yielding. He likes these yielding conditions. So I would be willing to run him at a uh, in yielding conditions. And in the, uh, the photo finish live world, that would basically be probably a 20% a to 60% chance of rain um, that would give us that yielding track. Uh, I would avoid 0%. I'm not going to race this horse on any condition that is 0% because there's just too much risk that I'm going to get a fast track. Um, you know, it might be a good track and he'll do so kind of okay, uh, but a fast track, he clearly doesn't do well at all. He's won one race there in all those that he's done. Um, and so I just don't want to have the risk of ending up with a fast track. So I can take 0% out of it and not have to not include those in my race analysis. And it helps me narrow down what this horse would be good at. <clears throat> now surface, uh, we can tell from the red again, this is why I highlight this stuff because it's instantly visible um, that he is a dirt track runner. That's where he wins all his races or at least uh, wins money. You know, if it's first place, second place or third, he's going to win some money at it on dirt. When it comes to turf, He's not very good at turf. You know, six, five, eight, six, ten. There's a couple of fours there. There's a seven down there at the bottom. But look at this. These are the number of entrants in the race. He has either been dead last or one place from last in every single one of these races. Even the races where he was number four and theoretically a fairly decent showing, he was fourth out of four or fourth out of five. So it, it's just absolutely crystal clear that because he's Chameleon is not a horse that is ever going to run on turf. I'm not going to even try to run him on turf because it's just not his jam at all. So I want to avoid that. It means I can weed those kinds of races out of the uh, out of my uh, analysis immediately. And then we come to race type. Now I want to know what kind of race this horse excels at because races are different. Races attract different kinds of horses um, because stable owners are smart. You know, they're going to race their horse uh, in an allowance race because that's the best opportunity for that horse or in a claiming race or whatever. So I want to know where this horse is good uh, in terms of the race types so I can put him in the right races. I don't want to have a horse that's fantastic at long distance, but put him in an allowance race because he's just not going to win it there. And this is where you find it. You're not going to find the race type the way I have it. That is a sort of a homegrown column. Um, here's where you find it. So under link up here, you're going to have the link to all the races. And you can see where I've, I've circled this or, or squared it, whatever. Um, there, that's a claiming race. And then you can see down here that there is a stakes race and then another stakes race. So what I'm doing is I am inserting a column in my Excel spreadsheet right there between entrance and link. And I am inserting the race type by hand so that I know exactly what kind of races these are. 
we can tell immediately that Cassis is not an allowance race horse. He doesn't do well. Um, he does potentially okay at a claiming race. Um, so I might consider running him in a claiming race just to see uh, is is he okay there? Does he continue to hold up and win on, on occasions there? He's won at the handicap level, but he's only won once. So I don't know that that means anything. It's clearly not a trend, um, but I would be willing to race him in another handicap or a two just to see how he does. Maybe he is a handicap racehorse, um, but you know I would need to test that with a couple more races before I can make that assertion. But clearly, this horse likes stakes races. Um, he has placed 55% of the time in the 11 stakes races that he's been in. And let me put 55% in perspective. Um, you know, I've gone through and looked at the top stables in the game, and these are stables that have run hundreds and hundreds of races, uh, and they have tens, twenties, a hundred horses or more. So they have put a lot of effort into this game. The top stables are winning between about 45 and 55% of the time. So if this horse is winning 55% of his stakes races, then he is winning at a, at a level that equals the best stables in the game. Now, this is just one horse. That doesn't necessarily mean he can compete against these, these stables or anything. I'm just saying that he is winning at a, at a level that would put him on par with what the best stables are winning overall. That is intriguing to me. That tells me I want to race this horse in stakes conditions. So let's build a race prototype for Cassis, and we know it's going to start with stakes races. So I've covered all, I've squared all the uh, all the stakes races here. We know that he is going to run at five to twelve furlongs, but we want to lean longer. I don't know that he can really win at five to seven furlongs. He's done it, but he's just not really a middle distance runner, uh, particularly the sevens through the nines. Again, he's won there a couple of times, but you know that's clearly not where his strengths are. His strengths are obviously longer distance. So I really want to focus on the 10, 11, and 12 furlong races. Clearly, we're going to run right. Um, he doesn't do well at left. You can see there's two left turning races down there, and he did bad. Both of those were on turf, and we know he's not a turf horse, so that might say something about that particular race. Maybe I would try racing him. Uh, in a left turn race on dirt in like sloppier yielding conditions to see if he likes left. Um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't focus on that um, until I begin building some winnings uh, with his traditional race prototype. Uh, as I mentioned, he's a dirt horse, so we're clearly going to focus just on the dirt. I'm not even going to consider looking at turf races, just dirt only. Uh, and his conditions, we're going to go with sloppy, uh, a good to sloppy, which in um, uh, photo finish live world is, I would say, 40% to 100% rain. Uh, we could go 20%, but 20% is still going to give us the probability of getting um, a, a firm track, which is clearly not Cassis's jam. So I would rather step it down to 40% because at 40%, we're going to get probably closer to a yielding track with the opportunity to move up to good uh, and the opportunity to move down into maybe slow. Um, to me, this is sort of the range where I want this horse to be 40 to 100%. And then when it comes to the race type, clearly we're just going to go with stakes. I mean, he is a stakes horse. That's where I'm going to focus most of my effort in running Cassis, uh, uh, you know, just in stakes. I'm not too worried about the other races. I might, I might try him in a handicap race um, after he's built up some wins in the stakes, and I have some, you know, spare derby I can use on him to just give him a go at a handicap race, maybe. And I would do the same with uh, with a claiming race, so long as it a long distance claiming race probably in you know the same kind of 40% to 100% rain chance conditions so that we have the kind of track he likes to run on. In fact, if I'm doing claiming, I might actually go maybe 80 to 100%. That way, I have a better shot of getting a sloppy track um, with an outside chance of soft and yielding, um, which is where he's probably going to do pretty good. 
and I would try that, but it's only going to come after he's run and won, or at least placed uh, and showed in a couple of, uh, of stakes races. So this is what it ultimately looks like after I've gone through that uh, process. And I have a spreadsheet that has all the horses on there, and I'm tracking them uh, in various ways. So here I can you know, show you when I bought Cassis, the age, his purchase, how much I paid. Uh, and I look at his record uh, and the number of races he's had before I bought him. That way I can compare it to after I buy him to see if I've improved on this horse uh, through my analysis. Uh, the, the stuff in yellow there, the, the annotations in yellow, are really the more important thing when it comes to actually picking races. So when I'm going through all the list of potential races that, that horses can, can sign up for, even the ones where it says, you know, that they're going to recommend the race for you, I want to know where this horse fits even within those recommended settings or those recommended races. I know I'm going to go with uh, a race that's 5 to 12 um, furlongs. I'm going to lean long, and I know I'm not going to go um, 6, 7, 8, maybe 9. I might. I'm not sure yet. But I'm clearly not going to go uh, in the middle races. It's really going to be leaning long. He's going to go on a right turn track. He's going to be on a dirt track, and he's going to be in good to sloppy conditions. Stakes is capitalized because it tells me this is a stakes horse. He wants to run stakes. And claiming is lower, uh, is not stay, is not um, capitalized because it tells me, oh, by the way, he also might do okay in claiming. Um, I can I tell that just because I know it's uh, it's not capitalized. That means um, I'm going to be updating uh, Cassis Chameleon as you know, sort of I go through this learning progression with you um, to show you how my analysis ultimately panned out. Did it pan out okay? Was I right to buy Cassis Chameleon? Was I right with my analysis on what this horse uh, likes in terms of race conditions, race types, distances, things like that? His first race is going off on October 23rd, uh, which happens to be, I think, tomorrow. Um, he's going to go in the Unity Trail Stakes. It is right up his alley. It's a 12 furlong uh, right turn on dirt in 100% chance rain conditions, which theoretically should give us something like a soft or sloppy conditions that he is okay with. Um, and you can follow these. I'm going to you know, post all his races uh, to my Twitter account at Digital Romad so that people can follow along and see if I was right. You know, did I did I make the right decision with this horse? And did I make the right decision with the races I pick for this horse based on my analysis of what kind of races he should be racing? Um, again, you can see this is the, the race itself, 12 furlongs, dirt, uh, turning right. It's a stakes race. It's for horses that are at most an A. Um, and I point that out because this is an A minus horse. So I am limiting the competition that he's going to go up against. He's not going to be facing A plus and S minus horses. Um, he could possibly beat A plus and S minus. I don't know. But until I really build um, a, a even stronger profile of him and what he's good at in the horses he competes against, I want to try and benefit as myself as much as possible by putting him against a competition level that I think he can win at. So I think an A- minus can beat an A, obviously, and they can beat A+, plus and whatnot. But this is where I want to start him so I have the best opportunity to generate a little income off of his, uh, off his races. And again, it's 100% chance of rain, which theoretically should give us the kind of track that, um, that Cassis Chameleon would excel at. Again, I have to emphasize that nothing is guaranteed, um, but all of these statistics combined give us the best chance to exploit this particular horse's abilities uh, on uh, you know, long tracks, uh, in the dirt, turning right, and in conditions that are good to sloppy, and in stake races. Uh, and with that, I'll say good luck. I hope I see you on the podium uh, up there with me, and if you see this particular if you see a jockey wearing this particular design on his silks, you'll know you're up there with me. Thanks a lot.